Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Your Your Man with Barnsley. In today's episode we will play through the entire month of January, see if we can make any improvements to our first team squad and basically get a good chunk of the season completed. There's been three games that you've missed since the last time we met so we will start with them. The first of which was a 1-1 away draw against a bottom three Fulham. Tom Kearney had put them in front nine minutes in but Gonzalo Ramos equalised shortly after that. We did then seem to dominate the game, particularly in the second half, but we couldn't find the second goal and we couldn't find the win. Next up was a bit of a fortunate 2-0 home win against Norwich. Abel Ruiz put us in front of 34 minutes in and Gonzalo Ramos got the second in the 70th minute. But they did dominate possession and they did have a good number of opportunities themselves. They weren't able to take them though, we did, so we got the three points. And finally was a weight against West Ham and we couldn't quite repeat the feat that we did against them in the live com, but we did manage to get a 2-1 away win. Marcel Tisserand put us in front 16 minutes in. Lewis Montenu put us a 2-0 up 37 minutes in. They got one back two minutes later through Andre Yarmolenko, but it wasn't enough and we got the win. And that sees the Premier League table looking like this. We currently sit in 7th position. We are 16 points clear from 18th place Burnley. We are probably 3 wins away from guaranteeing our spot in the Premier League next season. We're only five points away from Spurs in sixth position. So if we, if we were to go on a major run and uh, have just a stupid second half of the season, that would be fantastic. But I'm not expecting it. And as long as we stay in the division, that is all that matters. So the January transfer window has opened. We are on the 1st of January. We did have the option to change season expectations. I've decided against it because the rise in uh, transfer budget and wage budget was basically zero, so there was absolutely no benefit to me doing so. Everton have offered me a job interview, which I will be politely declining, unless they get relegated, at which point I will hope they take me on next season. We have made an offer for Ryan Gravenberch. Now, his contract is running up at the end of the season. Obviously, that benefits me very little. Um, if we were to sign him, uh, I would never manage him if he was to come at the end of his contract so i'm hoping if he accepts our offer we might be able to make a bid during january to be able to bring him in sooner the problem is ajax want a crazy fee from right now whether that remains a crazy fee once it gets to the stage where he's already agreed a contract with us we'll have to wait and see but having said that we aren't the only team who've made an offer both psv and olympic marcia have made a contract offer as well i would imagine our offer will beat psv's Maybe not Marseille's, um, and Marseille's higher reputation might end up swaying Gravenberch to go to them. But if he does accept our offer, I will be trying to bring in an absolutely superb Ryan Gravenberch into the club in January. And even if we can't, we are then going to set up Barnsley for an absolutely fantastic player for next season, even though we don't manage them. Aside from that, not a lot happening so far. We've obviously only got £8 million and 200 k available in the wages. I am holding off making offers for pretty much anybody else until the situation with Ryan Gravenberch sort of becomes clear. Because um, at which point, I wouldn't mind spending the £8 million to bring him in in January. And then I would go back to the board and say, listen lads, you've got £32 million in the balance. Can I have maybe 20 <laughs> And see if they'd give us that. But that's a story for a couple of minutes time, basically, in video. In terms of the games that we're playing today, then the first of which is Derby in the FA Cup in the third round. Everton, Newcastle, Sheffield United, Norwich and Southampton all in the Premier League. It could be an interesting month for us. They're all games where we could potentially win them, potentially. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But I'll bring you the results as and when they come. So I've just played Derby in the FA Cup third round. Played pretty much a full strength side against Championship Derby. And we massively struggled in this game and we were fortunate to get away with a 0-0 draw. So we'll go to a replay probably later in the month. Uh, the big news is though that Lewis Montenu picked up an injury and we will shortly find out how long for. Please don't be long. He is out for four weeks so we will be relying on Corley Woodrow for pretty much the entirety of January. Does that make my uh, January transfer targets a little bit different? Maybe. More offers have come in for Ryan Gravenberch. Both Nice and Stuttgart have joined the race to be able to uh, bring him in on a free at the end of the season. Oh, it's getting a little bit tricky now. Uh, obviously, now he's got five clubs to choose from, ourselves being the first one. Um, the only Premier League side to have made an offer, which does give me a little bit hope that maybe we've offered him a bigger contract than the European counterparts. We've offered him 54 grand per week with a significant increase after 20 games. 
um, playing for the club, I think goes to like 65. So um, that was basically what he wanted. So we'll wait and see if he accepts our offer. I really hope he does. Um, add Rangers and Hertha Berlin to that list. This is probably going to go on for the entirety of the window. Just more and more teams coming in. If we take a look at the bidder list, there is a lot of teams still interested who haven't quite, quite found themselves making an offer. Oh, it's, get, it's getting rough. Is there any way we can like say, come on Ryan, make your decision, please. Norwich City and Getafe. In some better news, Ian van der Heerde has agreed a new deal with a £78 million minimum fee release clause. I think he had one with uh, a minimum fee release that wasn't to clubs in the Champions League. And it was a lot less than 78. So to tie him down, at least gives Barnsley, after I leave the club, a little bit of room to manoeuvre in terms of um, actually making a sale. Names and Leganes have joined the race for Ryan Gravenberch. Frustrating game this one against Everton. It was away from home. We went 1-0 down pretty early on, 8 minutes in. But Cabaldo with a brace and I and Van der Heerde had put us 3-1 in front. But Moise Keane and Richarlison got two goals back pretty late on for Everton, which ended up seeing us share the spoils. Well, that's disappointing. After all of that, <clears throat> Ryan Gravenberch has decided to go to Norwich City for the 10k extra per week he will get. So, ah, oh, that kind of ruins my uh, ruins my January already. But we're still on the hunt, so we'll keep an eye out for some more players. Well, this has gone well in the replay against Derby. I want to quickly go through the penalties. You can see them live. Are we going to make it through against Championship Derby? Uh, nil nil in normal and extra time and we're out <laughs> this is absolutely dreadful our players have just went through extra time in a busy period of the season and we've been knocked out in the third round FA Cup replay against Derby which isn't great our board what were they expecting for the FA Cup they're expecting us to reach the fourth round so we only had to beat Derby you can understand why the team were knocked out by Derby I don't so if you could explain it to me that will be a uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. They're not even doing well in the championship either. So um, still, our squad's maybe got a bit to go. So we've just played Sheffield United in the Premier League and we managed to get a 2-0 home win. Abel Ruiz has found himself starting up front after uh, Lewis Montano's injury and he's absolutely loving it. And we're playing that uh, Espinosa on the left-hand side. He's done okay when he's been given the game time, so that's not too bad. We are surviving without Montano and we carry on with a win. Nothing happened in terms of transfers or anything, by the way. I think I've sort of come to the realisation that I'm not really going to get anybody who can improve our first 11 for the £8 million that we've got available. So what I think I'm going to do is I've got a lot of scouts going out looking at younger players who we might be able to sign for relatively cheap and then signing them to basically set up Barnsley for the future with this money. Because whilst I won't be managing them past this season, I do want to set up the teams I take to up to the Premier League to have a really bright future. So keep an eye, we might be able to bring one or two in. Potentially a game changer for the rest of the season. Phil Fodden has come onto the loan market and we have went straight in. Unfortunately for us, Lazio have also went in. Maybe us being in the Premier League might mainly want to come to us, even though Lazio are a far better club. And they are sitting in ninth in Serie A, but our offer's in. Where we've matched the wages that uh, Manchester City were wanting for the rest of the season. And if he is to come in, he's comfortably our best player. If he does. So we've just played Newcastle in the Premier League and drew 1-1. Ian van der Heer had to put us in front 18 minutes. But then I just want to bring your attention to Elliot Anderson who came on and changed the game for Newcastle. As you can see, uh, getting player of the match. He's absolutely dreadful. Um, <laughs> he's, he's worth £47,000. Uh, he's in Newcastle's under-23s. And he's just came on and bossed the game. So, great. So, we've just played Norwich away from home in the Premier League. It was a real test for us as it was 7th against 8th. And we come through with flying colours. Jordan Williams, Abel Ruiz and Bruno Costa with the goals to give us a pretty easy 3-0 win. So, we don't get Phil Fodden. He has agreed to join Lazio, which was expected. They're just a higher reputation club than us at the minute. But we do finally get our first signing of the summer. Summer, it's the January transfer window. It's Edwin Lopez for £975,000. He's an 18 year old Colombian centre back who looks like he's going to be the real deal. He's currently a two and a half star current player, five star potential. And uh, I'm more than happy to bring him into the club. It sets up Barnsley a little bit more for the future. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a couple of more of these kind of deals done before the transfer window slams shut. But he is actually available in our squad. Um, so that's that's not too bad. 
Another game, another draw. This time it was at home against Southampton. Andrea Sistana had put them in from 39 minutes in, but Nicolas Capaldo equalised shortly after half-time to make it 1-1. And that was the final game of the January transfer window. We've got two days to complete any further business we wish to do. And we do have a first-team player potentially joining the club. So the first major transfer of the window happens on the 31st of January. We signed Joaquin Sanchez, a left-back from Argentina. Uh, he's probably going to be our starter as well. He's at least going to compete with Tony Herrero for that starting spot. It was an area I identified as being the weakest in the squad, particularly in terms of strength and depth. Um, we've already accepted an offer for our backup left-back Ben Williams. He should be leaving the club um, this January transfer window as well. His contract is up at the end of the season anyway. So uh, to get any money for him whatsoever is uh, not a bad bit of business anyway. But I've had two more offers accepted for two more youngsters coming in potentially. So we might be able to get them over the line before the uh, transfer window shuts all together. But we've still got £4 million left and 150 k per week in the wages. Which should be able to see us through to complete these two signings. Philippe Stevanovic, we've signed him from, um, who we signed him from again, uh, Partizan Belgrade. Looks like a decent little winger. He's highly rated by my scouts at the very least. Three-star current, four-and-a-half-star potential. So bringing him in seems a no-brainer for £2.4 million. And then Ronaldo Matos, another two-star current, five-star potential, uh, four-and-a-half-star potential, sorry, right-back. Um, a right-back is definitely somewhere where Barnsley could use some reinforcements further down the line um, with strength and depth and potential to grow and stuff. Garessa Bell isn't going to be a starting right-back for very long. If I was to stay, anyway, it might be the starting right back for 10 years after I leave. But apart from the Ben Williams sale now, that is pretty much going to be the end of the transfer window and the end of uh, any business we do from now on If uh, as a manager of Barnsley. You know, them are our last transfers we will ever do, at least in terms of the players we will play with. I might end up going in for some players whose contracts are running out just to try and um, set them up for next season, even though I won't be here. Because uh, I know what the AI managers are like. The sign out Tosh. So uh, getting him, getting some new players in might be something I'd do anyway. But that is going to wrap up today's episode. I'll just quickly show you the Ben Williams transfer. He looks like he's going to go to... Oh, he's rejected the contract. He's going nowhere. So we're going to have three left backs, which is fine by me. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.